Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of winter and you can see that spring is in the air. So one of the first things that I do once spring is officially here is I go ahead and straighten out the yard. I start working on the yard, cleaning it up, you know, getting rid of those things that you forgot to get rid of before the first snow or you didn't have time to get rid of before the first snow. But another thing that I do is, is I empty out the back of my Suburban because throughout the winter time, every time I find deals here and there and you see me do a payday prep of something that was like, man, this was such an awesome deal. I just leave it in the back of my Suburban. Why? Because it's not really the family vehicle. So the back of my Suburban is just full of stuff. And this is a great time to tell you all that you should be creating your own hardware store. I'm going to give you a little tour through my hardware store, which is really a hardware tent. I have a platform here that I built to put all of these shelves on. And I am creating or have been creating slow and steady my own hardware store, where if there's something that I need in the house to fix something either major or large, I've also been creating my own lumber store. And I've got that load of lumber coming in later on today, where every year I buy all of the lumber that I know I'm going to need for the next season. And that load should be coming in sometime today but any projects that are small and large I can actually accomplish it with what I have stored away here now I don't only have hardware items here I have other uh, storage items here that I keep to be prepared like I think you can see up there some baby wipes some people think that baby wipes won't last in the freezing cold when they thaw out again, but I've used baby wipes that have been sitting out here in the freezing cold for two, three, four seasons. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. They always thaw out just fine. Nothing wrong with it. But anyways, let me go show you the back of my truck and show you what I mean about all of the things that I collect throughout the winter. And then I'll give you all a short tour of my hardware store that I've been working on for years now and that I know that I'll have when they're nowhere else to be found because eventually there'll be nowhere else to be found and we're gonna need to rely on those things that we put away for the future. Well, I'm not sure how well you can see my mess over here, but uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we put away over the winter here and I used the back of my truck to do so. Here is the Husky that I got from Rod's saw shop that you all saw me do on that video. But let me grab this stuff. Let me take it out. Let me go ahead and put it in its place where it goes in my hardware store tent. <laughs> and then I will give you a quick tour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I always carry extra windshield wipers in my vehicle. I always carry at least two. One for the passenger and one for the driver's side. You just never know, especially here during the winter, when your windshield wiper is going to fail. There was a time a couple of winters ago, well actually it was about three, it was when I was still working. I stopped at the gas station in the morning for my morning coffee and I left my vehicle on and the windshield wipers were off of course, but it was a very cold day, it was like negative 30 or so. Well it was so cold outside that with the warmth of the heater going onto the windshield and the chilly air outside, my windshield wipers got stuck to my windshield. So when I went back in my vehicle, I turned on my windshield wiper, they got ripped right off. And I was like, hot darn. And then I was like, wait a minute, I got a set of windshield wipers. It took me less than five minutes to put them on, even at negative 30, and I was on my way. Had I not been able to do that, then I would have been stuck until I got some windshield wipers or someone came and got me because the conditions outside uh, needed windshield wipers to be working and I would have been stuck there. So what's the moral of the story? Get some windshield wipers, put them in the back of your vehicle. If you never need them, great. You can change them out when you need to change them out because of age. There's a few things that I have to take over to the fuel depot and it's gonna be some of this right here. I usually keep my liquid oils and stuff like that over in the fuel depot. And uh, this was a really good deal. We got this at Costco here about a month ago. And uh, this right here is what I use as an additive in my heating oil it uh, allows it to stay good for longer it's like a treatment but it also allows it to burn a little bit hotter inside my toyo stove which is actually good for the efficiency and the health of the stove itself so let's go ahead and put this stuff inside of my fuel depot that way those of you that haven't seen it can take a quick look at it before we go into the hardware tent <laughs> this here is my fuel depot ladies and gentlemen and as you can see it is full of gas cans but also other things that are oils or flammables now i stick to the rule of putting away enough gasoline to fill up each of our vehicles at least one time 
I know that if it ever comes to where gasoline is so expensive or unavailable that we're not going to be driving the way that we always do. But I just think it's a great rule to have, to have enough gas put away to fill up each vehicle once. And then, of course, you're going to need to remember your peripherals like your generators and things like that that also take gasoline. So don't forget about storing gasoline for that as well. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this goes without saying, make sure that you're very safe. This fuel depot, as I like to call it, is at least 100, if not more, feet away from my home, and it's not near anything that's flammable. It's probably about 50 feet or so away from the bunker. I do have a five gallon jerry can that is full of Coleman Camp fuel, and I have a few more there. I have to add the one that I got on sale at the commissary here a few days ago. But this is what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I also do have a side over here. I built a small lean-to on the side of this shed. And before anyone asks about the weight, all right, because there does get snow there, what I did in order to reinforce that lean-to is I went ahead and put some 2 by 4s all the way down to the floor and all the way up to where the lean-to is attached to this shed. So it's got plenty of reinforcement for the weight of the snow during the winter. It did very well this winter. It was the first winter. And then over here under this little lean-to, I have all of my propane canisters that I keep away for the apocalypse. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is a must-have. I love this little air compressor. It's so easy to use and you can use it pretty much on anything. Check this out. I just hooked that up to my tire, really easy. It's not one of the ones that you twist on and off. It's one of the ones that you just clip on. See this, clip it on, it's on. And then it tells you the PSI through that nice LCD screen that you saw. Take it off really easy. Awesome little machine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm gonna share a couple of tips with you. Now, during the winter, and I don't know why it took me so darn long to figure this out, right? In the back of my wife's truck, since it's a two-wheel drive, we usually put sandbags in the back to weigh it down so she can have more traction. But what happens is, is every year when we take the sandbags out, I leave them outside, the sun gets to the fabric, and it ends up tearing, and we only get one use out of them. So why didn't I think of this before or sooner? I just went ahead and emptied some of the sandbags inside of these five-gallon buckets. Now, at the end of winter, we can take the buckets out put them anywhere we want on the property and be able to reuse them year after year. Another one of my chores, ladies and gentlemen, that I do once I have access to my tent is I take down our strip lights. <laughs> and these are the lights that we have like outlining our driveway and where we park at nighttime during the winter, which is almost always nighttime during the winter. So I go ahead and take these down, same thing with the power cords or extension cords that we use in order to hook up to our vehicles that are winterized. So I used to put these together, you know, connect them together with a zip tie, but then I always end up having to cut the zip tie off at the end of the year. I'm like, man, this is a waste of a great zip tie, right? There's nothing wrong with a zip tie, but I'm cutting them off every year. And I know I'm just being a little thrifty. However, I figured that using a little bit of electrical tape instead of a zip tie is better in the long run. It's a little bit cheaper. And plus those zip ties can really come in handy when you're in a pinch. And I've got a whole bunch of electrical tape. And that's why I wanted to show you a couple of the electrical tapes that I have. Now this is your regular, I think this is a PVC uh, electrical tape. I'm not sure exactly, but this is very high quality electrical tape. You can see it's a shiny one, right? But this, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have this kind of electrical tape here, it's like a cloth electrical tape, for the long run, it is the very best I've ever used. This right here doesn't get brittle, it doesn't get sticky, you know, when you put it on something for a long time, like this kind can. Like, for example, you can see right here that it's, it looks like it's a little sticky, right? Because this is a very old roll. This is a roll that used to be about three or four times as big. It used to come up to here. It used to be really big. Uh, this one here is usually comes in your average size roll, kind of like the size of this roll right here when this is brand new. But this is a great electrical tape. I highly, highly recommend this. And you know what? Anything that I talk about on here, I'll go ahead and uh, put it on my Amazon storefront. That way you can check it out if you want to. Because whenever I introduce something new like this or something like 
the air compressor that I was using, people always ask me, where'd you get it? So let me go ahead and show you how it is that I put this up so that we can put it under the tent and get it out of the way for the summer. So we're good to go on this one. Now we'll do our electrical cords. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is what my hardware store looks like. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty much a little bit of everything or everything that I think I'm going to need. Now, when we go through this short tour, this should convince you that I honestly believe that we are going to have some kind of a crash because I am literally stocking up on all of the things that I know we will need in the future and that I believe will become unavailable for whatever reason, ladies and gentlemen, it can be because of a financial crash, a monetary crash, a change in fiat currency. It could be for whatever reason, we are in a cycle and we are heading towards the end of that cycle, which will culminate in us having to be prepared more so than any other time, in my opinion, in the history of mankind. But anyways, let me just go ahead and show you here. We, we'll start right here. I got a couple of these five gallon buckets right here. And if you saw one of my old payday preps, really old one, I got a great deal on these guys. Check that out. This is two five gallon buckets full of screws. Now these are technically metal screws, self tapping screws. There's two different sizes. This one here is the larger one. And this bucket here has the smaller ones. But I believe that I ended up having more than I can fit in a bucket because my wife ended up getting me some stainless steel ones as well. Let's see what this is. Yeah, look at these stainless steel guys. This here was nothing. I mean, I, I probably ended up paying less than a penny per screw for the deal that I got. So I think that you can't have enough screws and bolts and nuts put away. You always find a reason to use them. And of course, I always keep these garbage bags, not for storage, but we use them all the time. These are the big 55 gallon bag uh, garbage bags, construction bags. And I just ended up taking this out of the trucks so that we can put them over here and they won't be in the way. But also here, every time that you see one of my payday preps from Costco, you see that I grab one of these ratchet straps if they're on sale. And these here are Christmas sale ratchet straps, which are smaller, but you grab them when they're on sale, slow and steady ones to race. We use these all the time. We break them all the time. Why? Because I am just terrible with tools. And let's see what we have here in the bottom, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. This is my zero water water filter with all of the extra filters that I purchased. Now this is my apocalypse water filter right here. If I'm using this, it's because we have some bad problems. We have some Christmas lights, which I use for the same thing that I showed you up there, the ones that I took off for the winter time. And then this is one that we just picked up on sale for like $2.50 a year or two ago. Uh, here, I have an extra pump for my fuel system out there should the pump that I use now goes bad. So there's an extra pump there in order for me to pump heating oil into my tank. And let's see, here is my little plumbing area. This has a whole bunch of stuff for plumbing. It's got a whole bunch of shark bites in them. Uh, let's see, this one right here has a whole bunch of filters for my uh, filter that uh, cleans out my heating oil. So that's what this has. And let me show you what's inside here because there's a whole bunch of little goodies in here. Plumbing stuff here. And we also have things for like, we got regulators that you hook up to the hose. I've got some, some gas rated Teflon tape. I've got a whole bunch of these shark bites. They're called shark bites. What are these guys called? It's like the same thing, tech tight, but it's the same thing as a shark bite. These things are so awesome. They're a little bit pricey, but man, do they work well. And then just a whole bunch of little plumbing stuff that I have in here that I know that I'll eventually use. It's just nice to have them now. And I'll tell you what, you go buy some of these things now and you'll see how much prices have really gone up. Incredible. In addition to my plumbing stuff, I also have some of these uh, toilet rings, you know, the wax rings, the cheapo ones. Just got a couple just in case. I think these will make a great barter item down the line. You probably saw me show you these during one of my payday preps. I also have some copper tubing here, which is very popular here in Alaska because Toyo stoves use the 3 8 outside diameter copper tubing. 
and 20 feet seems to be the perfect size so that you can get to your home from the tank without having to break the line. And uh, just other miscellaneous plumbing things. These hoses right here, I had to make up an extra set of hose for my LP tanks that heat the bunker whenever I use that LP stove in there. Before, I used to only have two tanks hooked up to the stove or to the heater, to the LP heater that's in my bunker. But I went ahead and set up an additional two tanks for a total of four. And that's what these guys are for so that we can hook them up to the system easily instead of having to unhook everything up and then hook those two up. And of course, some drain opener or 100% lye, which I don't really use for drain opener, but I do use for making soap. This here is what I use for drain opener. And this here works great. I don't think that they do the buy one, get one free anymore. But this is the one that I use for drain opener whenever I need it. It works great. And it's even great for just a maintenance thing. And over here, I just keep a few miscellaneous things. Of course, I keep some of my thermo cell things, some of the uh, actual pads that you need, along with the little canisters if you have one of the small thermo cells. This here is an extra one that I have just in case. And this is a great thing to have if you have a mosquito problem. And in Alaska, yes, we do have a mosquito problem most years. This works outstanding. And then these here, ladies and gentlemen, these are poop bags, but they're biodegradable poop bags, right? So if you ever have to poop in a bag and you want it to be biodegradable, this is what you need to get right here. Now, this is something that I think everyone ought to have a lot of. And of course, here it is, power cords. We know that the grid can go down anytime for whatever reason, ladies and gentlemen, and people are going to get stuck not having power cords in order to electrify their lives with their gas generators or solar generators or whatever. You're going to need power cords, all right? And guess what an awesome barter item this will be. Are you getting the point now, ladies and gentlemen, that I am going to be the hardware store of my community? This is a great way to preserve your wealth. Now, trust me, the 30 or 40 bucks that this thing cost me, I'd rather have it sitting here in this power cord or extension cord than to have it sitting in the in the bank ladies and gentlemen trust me i rather because i know that this here is going to be so much more expensive in another year or two same thing with all of the other ones that i have and one thing that i wanted to show you you see this right here do not throw these away when, whenever you have a power cord extension cord whatever it is whenever it goes bad do not throw it away right because there's nothing wrong with that wire all right, I ended up cutting it off of the two ends that were messed up. But look, you can always get something like this, all right, to make your own quarter. You can always splice it with something else. Now, this is the area where I have a lot of my jet boils, all right, and my other butane cans that I keep for my stoves. And I also have a couple of stoves back here. There's one back there. And uh, this is just for personal use. I don't ever plan on bartering this away unless I need something really really desperately and here are our five gallon buckets so we're gonna have to take a couple of these out there and fill them up with sand there they are i do have some gamma lids over there and uh those are really nice i would get a, a few of those at least that way when you open up a five gallon bucket of rice you can put a gamma lid on it and you can use it right there in the bucket instead of having to take the other lid on and off all the time. Another thing that you should have as many as you can, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, and that's tarps. We've got tarps of two different sizes here. I believe that these are the 8x8s right here, the smaller one, and these are the 12x16s that you get at Costco. So tarps is another thing that you can't have enough of, in my opinion. Jars is another thing that you can't have enough of, in my opinion, as well. Uh, these boxes here, this just has miscellaneous stuff, right? So there's some household items there for painting and stuff like that. Uh, same thing over there. Uh, here is my apocalypse wood stove right there. Uh, this is just something that I use to clean up around the property every once in a while until I get a goat, that is. Let me show you my auto parts store. And this is all spare auto parts ladies and gentlemen i've got anything from rotors i've got automatic belt tensioners i have uh water pumps i have alternators i have lights 
for every single part of each of our vehicles a spare set uh, filters I mean you can pretty much mention it and I've got it in here why because this is what I did check this out alternators right here brake pads a whole bunch of windshield wipers I already showed you those a tire repair kit I got with my mechanic James and I asked myself, says hey what are the parts in a vehicle the ones that I own what are the parts in these vehicles with your 35 years of experience have you noticed go out the quickest and that you have to replace the most you know on a regular basis and these are the parts he told me he said water pump alternators uh, hubs wheel hubs right things like that I said okay thank you very much so I went ahead and ordered them uh, thermostats as well he said so I ordered all that stuff why ladies and gentlemen let me show you real quick why because I guarantee you that the money that I spent on these parts last year is nothing compared to what it would cost to get them again this year. My brother's been a mechanic his entire life, and he even told me that there are some parts that he had to wait for months just to get. Regular parts, like an alternator. And also that when they came in, they were three, four times more expensive than in the good old days. So if I know that I'm going to use rotors one day, brake pads, that I'm going to keep my vehicles for long term, why not stock up these things now, right? Instead of letting your money burn away with inflation in the banks. And of course, here we have our chainsaws. This is the Husky that you all saw me go and get serviced at Rod's Saw Shop. I do have a new one back there, but Gresham's Law says that we were going to keep the new one nice and handy and clean until the old one is wore out and ready to go to the dump right but i think this one will last me a very long time and of course i have all the peripherals that go with a chain so i got got extra chains i've got some extra fuel i use this fuel right here in the chainsaw like once every five or six phillips so i normally fill it up with regular gasoline all right and some two cycle oil and i'll do that five or six times and then i'll fill it up once with the good fuel and to finish it off, ladies and gentlemen, this is just my miscellaneous tool. All right, this is just the, the, the tools that I throw in here that I find. I go through a lot of tape measures, all right? I either lose them or break them. So I remember showing you all these. I think it was a, two years ago or two Christmases ago that I got these on sale for like five bucks a piece, which is a good deal. Uh, but this is just my miscellaneous tools. I usually keep the tools that I use the most in a box outside and then i troll it around in a little cart that way i can always have it nearby and i just keep it in that box but this is just spare stuff that i have this is a great thing to have right here all right this is a great way to be able to splice cables and things like that like for example i have a an extension cord right a 20 gauge extension not 20 gauge a 12 gauge extension cord that i ran over this last winter with my snow plow well that thing is like a hundred foot long 12 gauge extension cord you better believe that i'm going to splice that thing together and continue to use it i'm not going to be throwing that stuff in the dump but these are just my miscellaneous tools and of course we have to have our christmas things easily accessible all right ladies and gentlemen listen i hope that you got a little bit of entertainment out of this if not that you got some ideas on things that you can stock up that you know you're going to use in the future and or are going to become a lot more expensive in the future. I think it's a no-brainer that things are just going to continue to get more expensive as time goes on. However, I do not recommend, ladies and gentlemen, not one bit that you get things just to get them. Get them because you know you use them and you know that you're going to use them in the future and get a lot more than what you normally do. That way you can use whatever extra you have to barter with should the time ever come. And if anything, you can use whatever extra you have to help out your community members, all right, where you live. And you don't have to barter it. If you can afford to give them away, then you can afford to give them away and help out your community. I'd rather do that than keep my money in the bank any day of the week. Having said that, have a great day. Thank you very much for hanging out. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world will be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I am out. God bless.